I had to leave Scotland in the early 1980s. However, my links with the situation in Scotland were still very strong, partly because my young brother, Neil, Professor Neil McCormick, stood five times in that period for the Westminster Parliament. Unfortunately, he didn't get elected, but he was certainly very active in it. Eventually, he became a European MP at the elections in 1999 for the European Parliament. And he did a full term in the European Parliament and made an international reputation because of his wide knowledge of jurisprudence, his wide knowledge of constitutional matters. He became a real expert worldwide in matters such as that. And that was one of the reasons why Alex Salmond made him a special advisor in the run-up to the referendum. These were the days when I was not really involved, so I can't claim any personal involvement in the matters that took place. But I can still comment on it, I think, quite distinctly. You see, one of the reasons after the election in 1979, where I had fallen out personally with the SNP's ideas and taken up the SDP, was I was very much convinced that it was a devolutionist solution that would finally bring about the situation that we now have today. And it was easier for the SNP to form a government in a devolutionist setting than it would have been if they'd still been campaigning full throttle for independence. The first governments in the Scottish Parliament were Labour-led, but they were coalitions of Labour and the Lib Dems. So it was very brave, I think, when the SNP first became the biggest party in the Scottish Parliament. It was a brave decision to decide to be a minority government rather than being tied in with another party. For one thing, that has allowed the SNP to have a free run right from those days up until the present. In fact, it'll be up until 2016 as the, the natural, if you like, governing party. And that has been a big advantage from our point of view. Nowadays, everything is subsumed into the Yes campaign, into the fight for the actual referendum. We've got the referendum, and it looks very much to me as if the efforts of the No campaign have made it much more certain that we're likely to win, actually, than might have been the case otherwise. There are various reasons for this. I think that the main reasons reside in Scotland rather than south of the border. I suspect, or I'm pretty sure, that the main driving forces behind the No campaign are Scots people, particularly Scottish MPs. And it's not hard to see why, because these people have become used to being part of the Westminster system. They enjoy being in the Westminster system. They enjoy, of course, being ministers in the London government. These are the people who would be the hardest ones of all to persuade to vote for independence for Scotland. And that has been proven at this time. Fortunately for us, unfortunately for them, it also means that they're very bad at stating the case to vote against the Yes campaign. It's very difficult for them to concede what improvements to the devolution settlement can be made. One of the things that the recent opinion polls have shown is that support for the Yes campaign has grown significantly since the various threats about the financial situation and so on were announced by the uh, the No campaign. I think lots of people have often wondered in the broader sense what role the SNP would have to play in an independent Scotland. Well, I don't know myself, actually, what the political scene will be like. At the moment, the Conservative Party in Scotland is, has virtually disappeared. In an independent Scotland, will there be a more sizable Conservative Party? Scottish Conservative Party, that's to say. What about the Labour Party? Some of its former leaders have been outspoken in terms of voting yes. So we have to assume that there'll be a Scottish Labour Party in an independent Scotland and a Scottish Liberal or Liberal Democratic Party. But I don't know, and I can't quite envisage what the roles of each of these parties will be or even what sort of chunk of support they'll have. And as for the SNP, I suspect that certainly to begin with, the SNP, as a very well-organised body, will certainly seek to continue to seek to be the government. The most exciting period ever in modern Scottish history... And I wonder if everyone has sat back and just considered the position. We are very 
possibly in the situation where we're about to become an independent country. Now that should be focusing everyone's minds, not in the terms of the No campaign and their moans and groans about this and that, but we ought to be regarding it as a fantastic springboard for the future, a future which will be controlled in Scotland and by Scottish people. And I'm quite convinced that all the businessmen and so on, some of whom express great dismay about the possibility of independence, you'll soon find them changing as soon as independence comes. Fascinating time, absolutely fascinating. I wish my brother were here to see it happening. <laughs>